Good afternoon, this is Pete in 6QW, and uh, today we're going to demonstrate our uh, new homebrew single sideband transceiver. But I thought I'd give you a little tour first of the uh, transceiver and the innards. This is a, uh, a top view of the transceiver, and it's a pretty standard architecture that I ha have adopted recently and have found to work extremely well. It's a, a single conversion transceiver uh, operating with a 9 megahertz IF and it's a two band version uh, which means it will operate on 40 and 20 meters. Initially I had it on 40 and 75 meters and I've since moved it to 40 and 20 meters. The heart of the transceiver is this circuit board right here and uh, essentially uh, this, is, this device here is an SBL1 double balance mixer and it's used uh, on receive as the receive mixer and on transmit as the transmit mixer. So the local oscillator being supplied by an Arduino driven DDS which is right here in this, this part of the circuit uh, it operates at a frequency uh, of uh, above the uh, incoming frequency on uh, 40 meters and uh, below the incoming frequency on, on uh, <clears throat> uh, 20 meters. So essentially the, the LO is always used, used both for the receive and transmit mixer and so there is no uh, switching between that. Uh, in some architectures they have uh, this stage here as the, um, for instance, as the receive mixer and the, and, and the BFO and the uh, balance modulator and uh, this other SBL one here acts as a product detector and balance modulator. So there's no switching of the LO and BFO. They're, they're always into the SBL ones. This is a commercial 9 megahertz uh, crystal filter that I purchased from the GQRP club. And down here are two bilateral amplifier stages that are based on a plusy circuit and it's nothing more than a uh, 2N3906 and a 2N3904 and depending upon what gets biased means either the signal goes this way or goes this way. So uh, uh, it's just a little, little. there's a little relay up here which you can't see that's used to uh, transfer the signal between uh, transmit and receive. Um, this circuit board right up here is actually an electronic switch that uh, has an opto isolator in it when you hit the push to talk switch. It's got a uh, 7400 IC in there that toggles and these two power transistors uh, I, uh, they're uh, an IF uh, TIP32C and they uh, provide uh, transmit and receive voltages uh, to the appropriate parts of the circuit. Um, turning this up here this, uh, this board right here is a very interesting board in that it has a single uh, 2N3906, oh, I'm sorry, this, this board here is the bandpass filter board and there's two little relays in here that switch between uh, 40 and 20 meters. So these are the bandpass filters and then from this bandpass filter stage goes on to the uh, receiver transmit mixer, the SBL1. Embedded right in, in here, which you can't see too well, is, is a similar stage using a, a 2N3904 transistor that has, there's two little relays similar to these two relays here that uh, change the direction of the signal on transmit. Um, essentially the relay connects with the power amplifier stage which is over here on receive. Uh, the single stage acts as the receiver RF amplifier stage so the relays do the switching uh, back and forth here. And uh, on, on this side we'll turn this around, is uh, the other uh, key elements. This little board right here is a combination of microfilm amplifier which is an NE5534 and uh, over here is uh, another stage, uh, this is the audio amplifier which uses a surface mount 2N3904 driving a uh, uh, LM386 and there's a little pickoff voltage here with a pot and this is the S meter and uh, part of this also is the AGC circuit. On the back side here is the Arduino driven DDS and of course on the front panel here we have the LCD display that lets you, uh, lets you operate uh, so that you can see the, the frequency and all the other circuit elements. 
this uh, transceiver uh, works exceptionally well and I should also mention that um, I have a packaged uh, RF brick on the back here which unfortunately is no longer available this I got from communications concepts and it takes one milliwatt in and produces 20 watts so my little stage right right in, buried right in here produces one milliwatt to drive this brick stage and the reason it's no longer available there's a um, there's a uh, device that's a that's an amplifier block that was built by Motorola the MHW591 and if you can find them they're pretty expensive nowadays so you can buy the board from um, communications concepts but unfortunately you can't buy the device so uh, we have a little less meter here uh, these two switches provide one the switching between 20 and 40 meters and all it does is supplies voltage and uh, this is the low pass filter board back here so when I put the uh, switch in one direction it powers a set of relays that will uh, put it either on 20 or 40 meters power on power off just selects the right uh, relay so we'll have the right band pass filter right low pass filter this uh, switch right here is uh, upper side band lower side band and you can't hardly see it here but in this little box is a uh, surface mount 2 and 3904s or crystal oscillators two separate crystal oscillators one for lower side band one for upper side band so it's sideband selectable. Uh, the overall size of this is uh, <clears throat> six inches wide, four inches high, eight inches deep. So it's a pretty compact rig. I've worked DX with it. I've worked uh, across the United States on 40 meters and it consistently always gets uh, good audio reports. Um, in Solder and Smoke Podcast 161, uh, which took place on May 26th uh, of this year, 2014, we discussed uh, the fact that I have uh, built a lot of radios using circuit blocks that I use over and over and over again. And the uh, bilateral amplifiers that we looked at earlier, the, these devices right here, the, the uh, 2N3904, 2N3906, I've used in several transceivers, the mic amplifier, an audio amplifier stage I've used in quite a few transceivers, the low pass filters, the um, band pass filters um, are all standard common design. Uh, this circuit board back here which is on transmit is the transmit pre-diver and on receive is the receiver RF amplifier I used on the KWM4 project. So there's nothing wrong with reusing technology and while at the same time <clears throat> we like to always try the the best and the newest, uh, at the end of the day we want a working radio and this has proven to be a, an excellent working radio for us. So you'll hear me comment in the podcast, uh, 161 Solder and Smoke, about the reuse of circuit elements and pretty simple architecture. Single conversion works really well. This is uh, on uh, two bands, 40 and 20. Um, the Arduino driven DDS is uh, the brainchild and the design is from Paul Darlington M0 XPD so uh, I, I didn't develop that I just used it and uh, his design enables you to tune all the amateur bands so um, uh, this would probably work on all the bands uh, with the exception of uh, 17 meters where the the IF and, and the LO would be about on the same frequency so so probably not a really good idea but um, uh, as it stands, it, uh, it has operated on 75 and 40, and I subsequently changed that to f uh, 40 and 20 meters. And uh, there's no reason why it couldn't be 40 or 15 or 15 and 10 or 20 and 10 or 20 and 15. It's just all that would require doing is changing the, the band pass filters here and the low pass filter for the appropriate band. So this is Pete, N6QW, and thank you for riding along with us on our my latest project, the uh, two-band uh, QRP single sideband transceiver. This is N6QW signing off.